Unit 2, Part 1, Computer Programming Essentials. Our objectives for this chapter, this unit is going to follow closely along with Chapter 1 in your textbook. So I encourage you to use these slides as your guide when you're reading the textbook. We're going to understand basic programming terminology. I believe that learning the vocabulary is an essential part of learning anything new. Um, so I'm a big, big, big proponent of learning vocabulary. We're going to analyze a Java program, a very simple Java program. We're going to compile a Java program, correct syntax errors, run a Java program, analyze and correct logic errors, add some comments, and learn how to get help. So some, to start off, some basic programming terminology. A computer program is a set of written instructions that tell a computer what to do. That's it a set of instructions that tell the computer what to do. Without any help from the, from the programmer, the computer really doesn't do anything. It needs a programmer to write the instructions to tell it what to do. Machine language is the most base, it's, that's the language that the computer will understand. Now all computers that are um, available to the consumers today are digital computers. That means that they only understand zeros or ones, off or on. And um, because they are digital, they only understand this low-level programming language called machine language. And it's not human-readable. Humans can't really understand machine language, but the machines do. Humans understand high-level programming languages. They're more English-like. It allows the programmer to use English-like statements to um, uh, accomplish a task. These statements are then translated into machine language that the machine can understand. The syntax are the specific set of rules for the language. Much like English has specific syntax, Java has specific syntax as well. In English, every sentence starts with an uppercase letter and ends with some form of punctuation, and in, in Java there are similar rules as well. Program statements are similar to English statements, sentences, excuse me, and they are specific commands to carry out specific tasks. A computer program is a set of program statements. To translate your um, high-level language like Java into machine, the low-level language, the machine language that the computer can understand, it takes a compiler or an interpreter. The compiler will uh, go through all of the Java statements and make sure that they can be translated into machine code. And um, if, if they can't be translated, it's typically because there's some problem with syntax. There's a syntax error. It's missing the required punctuation or uh, it doesn't recognize a word. So if you get a syntax error, the compiler is going to kick it back to the programmer and say, hey, you've got a problem in line 10, for example. It'll tell you the line number and uh, try to give you some more instructions about what's wrong. Finding and correcting errors, such as syntax errors, that's a process known as debugging. Admiral Grace Hopper, one of the first programmers in the whole world, uh, was working on one of the first computer systems. I believe it was at Harvard, working on the Mark I. And she found the computer wasn't behaving as expected one day, and a moth had been attracted to the vacuum tubes that were running the computer program. And she scraped it off and taped it into her logbook and said that she debugged the program. And therefore, the term debugging was formed. It's, no, it's the process of finding and fixing errors. A syntax error is when your statements aren't formed correctly, and your program will not compile if you have a syntax error. It will not run. But there are also types of errors called logic errors. And a logic error is when your program runs, but it doesn't do exactly what you expect. Um, an example in real life, let's say you're trying to follow a recipe to cook brownies. And the recipe doesn't say that you have to add any eggs. And you make, mix up your brownies, and you think everything's fine, and you cook them but they don't rise and they don't hold together and you wonder what the heck happened there was a logic error you, you followed a recipe but it didn't produce what you expected and that's an example of a logic error your program runs it just doesn't do what you expect it to procedural programming is a, uh, a type of programming that uses procedures there are three specific procedures three pr specific structures um, and any program we'll talk about this in class but any problem can be solved using these three structures. They are sequence, selection, and iteration, but we'll come back to that in class. Um, procedural programming means that you execute one statement right after another. 
and um, it uses variables which are named locations in memory that hold values and it uses procedures which are group, groups of statements that form a logical unit. To think of a real-world example of a procedure, let's say you, you have a specific set of routines that you follow when you get ready for school in the morning. Um, most people do. They have to w set an alarm and wake up and eat breakfast and brush their teeth and put their uniform on and grab their backpack or what have you. You've got your own set of procedures for, for getting ready in the morning. Each of those steps brush the teeth, the have the breakfast. Each of those steps form part of the getting ready in the morning procedure. And the same is true with programming. You can group statements to accomplish a specific task and put them all in something known as a procedure. Some language features of Java. Java was developed about 25 years ago by the nice folks at Sun Microsystems. It's what's known as an object-oriented programming language. More on that later. It is general purpose. It can be used for a lot of different things and it has some very specific advantages. In fact, uh, the IEEE, which is the Institute for Electrical and Electronics Engineers, have rated Java number one in terms of use, in terms of ease of use, in terms of security, in terms of installed base, in terms of jobs available. It's been ranked number one for the last several years in a row. So Java is a powerful language, it's widely used, and it's a really good first language to learn. Um, Java is also architecturally neutral. And what architecturally neutral means is that it can run on pretty much any computer. Think of your car. You might have a car, the Wyman's don't because our cars are much more basic than this, but you might have a car that has a backup camera that will show you what is behind your car. That backup camera is probably, writ probably written in Java, running Java. Um, if you have a, a microwave, that has a popcorn button on it. You push the button and it figures out when the popcorn is done and that's how long it, it runs. That is probably running Java. If you've got one of those refrigerators that senses whether or not the ice cream is melting, that is also probably running Java. So Java runs on a wide variety of machines. It's architecturally neutral. Not many programming languages do that. And here's why. Uh, here's what makes Java special. Java does not actually run on the microwave, the car, the um, refrigerator, or the Mac. What it really runs on is something known as a Java Virtual Machine, JVM. That's a little piece of software that's written specifically for the microwave, or the car, or the computer. And that piece of software is what's running your Java program. So it's that little extra layer in there that makes it possible for Java to be architecturally neutral also known as platform independent, and it's pretty special. It's, it's what makes Java really have a lot of power. Um, moving on, your source code, the statements that you write, the Java statements that you program, that's known as your source code. And source code has a file extension. Your source code files will have a file extension, .java. That's how you know that it's your source code. Uh, your byte code, that comes out when your program is translated into a language the machine understands, that's called byte code in Java. And your byte code has the same name as the source code, but a .class file extension, .class. And the byte code is not human readable. So if you want to um, send me your program to have a look at, you must be sure to send me your .java file, not the .class file. We can write programs in a development environment. These days, everybody uses an integrated development environment. And what it means by saying it's integrated is that you can create, edit, modify, and run oh, and debug your programs in one place using one software program. And in this class, we're going to be using NetBeans. Um, integrated development environments or development environments, there are several different kinds to choose from. I happen to like NetBeans for a variety of reasons. Mr. Faf is using JGrasp. He's using a different um, environment, and it doesn't really matter. You'll you hear a lot of people use Eclipse, which is another widely used one. Uh, it's just a matter of personal preference, and I've decided to standardize on NetBeans. Um, and the Java interpreter is what actually runs on the JVM, on the Java, Java Virtual Machine. The Java interpreter is what's executing the bytecode line by line. So for a visual of what we just talked about, the Java source code, that's what the programmer writes, and that's in, it has a file extension of .java. 
The Java compiler translates the Java source code into bytecode that will be run on the Java virtual machine, the JVM. Um, and you'll notice the Java virtual machine has the Java interpreter embedded there and it communicates with the operating system. The operating system on a Mac is iOS. The operating system on a PC in Mr. Faf's lab is Windows. And the operating system on your car or microwave or refrigerator will be something else depending on that machine.